Hi friends, it's Monica and let's review The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. Today I finally had some time to sit down and film this review for you guys. I've been wanting to film but I've been swamped at work. Anyways, this series is a continuation from the Shades of Magic trilogy which is A Darker Shade of Magic which is book one. In this notebook we're following the old cast of characters along with new characters. I also do have a full series review of Shades of Magic and if you're interested in my full complete thoughts in that, I'll link that in the eye above and in the description box below. This book takes place in London but there are actually parallel worlds that are connected through the city of London and all these worlds can be accessed by only a rare and special type of magician known as Antari. There are four parallel worlds that we have in this book. The first one is our earthly London known as Grey London. There is Red London which is completely full of magic and everyone has access to magic. White London you have to fight for your ability to wield magic and we have Black London which is a dead world. We are catching up with our old crew seven years after the events of the first trilogy and we get to catch up with Kel, Lila, and Ryan. And we also follow Tess who is a young teenage girl who has a rare magical ability. And we also follow Kosika who is a really young queen from White London and she is trying to heal her world. There's also a new threat arising in Red London that is targeting the throne. That was a very brief overview but I'm going to go more in depth with our characters. But first up, I wanted to talk about the writing and the world building. The writing holds up and we still get that V.E. Schwab flavor of her fantasy writing. It's very smooth but it also has a good mix of action and downtime. Given how this is taking place at seven years after the last book of the Shades trilogy, there are many flashbacks to give us more context of what happened with the old characters as well with the new. I really did like reading these flashbacks but I think it could have been shortened a bit so we could focus more on Tess and Kosika and their stories. The world building itself was incredible. We get a more in-depth view of the magical system being that there is these threads of magic that are sometimes visible to some people, and how each world and each London has very strict limitations and I'm quite sure we will see those limitations being broken down and the consequences of that. Okay, moving on to talk about characters. So first up, I wanted to tackle Lila, Kel, and Rai, and also Alucard. We're catching up with them after seven years, so a lot of things can happen in seven years. For the first third of the book, we are mainly focusing on our old cast of characters, which I didn't mind. Kel and Lila are traveling the world while Rai and Alucard are dealing with threats against the throne, which kind of sounds like a unfair trade-off, but it's just how their roles are right now. Lila, she can still be really rude and insufferable and being like I am that girl type of character from book one in A Darker Shade of Magic. But I think Lila has grown in other ways and more of acknowledging her emotions and getting more in touch with her emotional side. Cal, he is still that headstrong person but he has been dealing with a wound that cannot be healed and it's very interesting to see him navigate that. I don't want to say too many spoilers but with Rai, he is going through many changes throughout those seven years and he's still getting used to his new position. Overall, I really love seeing the old gang and seeing what they were all up to. On to our new characters. First off, we have Tessaly. She goes by Tess. She's a teenage girl with that rare magical ability and she is able to see those threads of magic and she can actually manipulate them. She lives in Red London and she runs a magical repair shop. And soon enough, after a rare magical object falls into her hands, she is on the run. I enjoyed Tess. She has a very unique voice. She comes from a difficult childhood, but she's young and very resourceful and able to think quickly on her feet. And also, she is very capable of taking care of herself. 
I could see how Tash just wants to keep her head down and tinker away at repairing magical objects, but with unforeseen circumstances, she is pulled into dangerous waters and she is like catapulted into this whole new situation. <laughs> then we have Kosaka and she is the young queen of White London and she is quite literally using blood to heal her world and their use and ways of magic because in White London are very harsh and they will kill to even get an ounce of magic. Kosaka, she learns to command her power and not only her magic but her rule of her world. The most interesting part of her storyline is her unusual spiritual connection to someone and how that might lead her down to a darker path. For Kosaka, she had to grow up very quickly, but I really like how she will do anything to protect her world. And she's the type of person to remain calm in very unexpected and dangerous situations. And for her, I think she can either be seen as a hero or a villain, but so far it's undecided for me and we'll see what happens with her in the next book. I'm going to say my final thoughts and I'll be going into spoilers with my predictions for the next book in the rest of the series. So what I did think about this book is I absolutely devoured it. I loved it. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Although there were some small issues like the flashbacks being way too long, I still felt that the old characters intermingling with the new characters was done in such an easy way to read. The usual has a way with words and it really did feel like you were part of the family with their characters, especially with Kel, Lila, Rai, Alucard. I really like seeing the rise of our new antagonists and villains and seeing where that will take us. I am very curious about the new plot points and Honestly, I'm just so excited to be back in Red London and reading about this world again and all the characters. This book really does have it all. You have explosive action, magical lore, and deepening friendships and relationships. It does really have every little thing I look for in a fantasy book and I really do highly recommend you to check out this series, but I think it would be best for you to read The Shades of Magic Shoji first. Okay, and that's the end of my non-spoilery review section. I'm going to be saying some spoilers because of my predictions for the rest of the series. My first prediction is Bishwap not being quite subtle in her foreshadowing and her writing. She kept on mentioning, especially with Rai, that there was going to be like a festival happening and everyone around Rai is like, why are you having this festival? It's not safe. But Rai is like, we have to, okay? It's for the morale of the city. So my prediction here is that there's going to be a huge major event happening at this festival, like someone dying or being severely injured. Maybe like the walls of the world will come down or something like that. I'm not really sure why I feel like this but we'll see if I'm even right or close to that. My second prediction has to do with Holland. I did not really mention him in this review because that is such a major spoiler. Holland is back as a ghost now and <laughs> I'm like, is he actually back or is he just a figment of Kosaka's imagination and just living in her mind as a ghost? But then he's somewhat tangible. I don't know. I think Holland is actually dead and this new Holland is someone in disguise and being a villain from Black London somehow. Because to reactivate the source of magic in Black London can really go sideways at any point. In Kosaka, she's still very young. She's 14, 15 years old. She's been through the ringer, but I do think she wants the best for her White London world. But I think the Holland thing is a little bit weird. I don't know. Let's see where that leads us. As for Lila and Kel's relationship, their relationship is a little bit weird, <laughs> to be honest. Lila, she can be very distant, but after reading the entire book, I could see how they work with each other. And even though Lila doesn't have the most likable personality ever. I do see how she is making an effort to get Kel healed from his um, magical abilities. Also with Nadia, 
who is Rai's wife and queen. I really like the throuple that's going on. But Nadia, she's very suspicious. We still don't know much about her. I think it's really easy to put Nadia in the category of like, oh, she's a bad person. But I think she is trying her best to protect her daughter and Rai at the same time. She just has like a unique way about going that. But I do predict that Nadia will be part of the good guys. With Tess, I think she will eventually have that run-in with her sister and her family and that might be very ugly for her but right now she's in a good place so I'm happy for Tess. For Kosuka, I kind of already mentioned her. I think Kosuka will be either the hero or the villain but let's see. And that's the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed watching it and enjoyed my thoughts on this book. Anyways, I hope you all had a wonderful day and don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below, don't forget to ring the bell to not miss any future uploads, and I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!